a few years ago, the velvet pumpkin made its way into our homes as a gorgeous handmade decoration. I made a few myself, and now we fuel you forward with a new DIY decorating theme. Call it the cousin of the velvet pumpkin. At our creative table today, we are making velvet mushrooms for your fall mantle and tablescapes. They are whimsical and woodsy and they appear straight from the storybook forest. Artist and designer Amy Ferry is here to inspire and instruct us how to make them and she has this flair. If you know her, you know this. She is magical and, and imaginative and this project is perfect for you. When I saw it, I was like, Amy Ferry. You can like, you know when <laughs> it's Amy. I've been to do it for a few years, so. Well, and then something recently really sparked that. Yeah. Tell me about the story behind the mushrooms. So I went to Spain as like a delayed uh, birthday trip, 80th birthday for my dad. We went and did, um, we went to Spain for a month. And part of that trip, we did a Camino. It's a famous hike that you do to the Cathedral Santiago. And on the hike, it was absolutely just enchanting. That's the word to describe it. it. I just remember getting up in the morning and there was just mist in the air, just like you see with the forest and the vines and, and mushrooms. There were so many wild mushrooms and wild berries and ferns I've never seen in their natural habitat. I mean, I've bought them at the forest, but never seen them in their natural habitat. It was absolutely a breathtaking trip. So, and so of course, as you're walking along, you're like, and I'm going to recreate this. I'm going to make I that, know. and it's going to be out of velvet. <laughs> I mean, these mushrooms that you took these pictures on this trek, is that correct? Some of them I did. Oh. Some of them I didn't get the, I didn't take the picture because I thought, oh, I'll see it again. And then I just didn't have my camera. Or I didn't take it. So, but a lot of them Someone I did take. Someone had taken it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The red ones, I didn't get a, a picture, but yes. So beautiful. And this whole woodland theme, I feel like is so huge right now. Yeah. I told you, I just went to a party. My niece's kid, she did woodland. I was so proud of my hedgehog cheese ball that I made. <laughs> but do you think that this is something that's going to stay around? I do. I, I mean, I, I'm a 60s, 70s child, and mushrooms and owls were huge back then. I'm, I remember my mom's best friend collected them. So I think that they're here to stay. I've seen them at Anthropology. That's kind of the first big comeback that I saw. Um, 20 years ago, I bought this huge, ginormous mushroom at Shopco. So, <laughs> and, I, and Etsy creators are now making them, and so I think they're going to continue to spread like fungi does. <laughs> <laughs> and they're so lovely. Talk to me about your display here and kind of what you've done. So I wanted to show a couple, a few different applications. One is the terrarium. I, I, I think the specimen look is kind of fun for Halloween and fall. Um, so I did, I did a cluster in a terrarium. Um, I did an ornament that you could put on your tree or just have in a little vignette on your on your table as you enter the home. Um, and then I also wanted to share an application for a tablescape. So that's kind of how I use the velvet mushrooms, but there's so many other applications. I really wanted to do a wreath with all the velvet mushrooms and I might get that done, I don't know, but <laughs> there's just so many things you can do with them. They're beautiful. They yeah, and you put them luxury. on like little cake stands mm -hmm. or just on the clump of moss, any way that you put them, they just look so darling. And what I like about yours, they're not all just the typical mushroom shape like we always See. Yeah, you've done. Is there something that you did specifically for these different shapes when you thought well, of? Well, the pictures you know that I took in Spain were definitely um, some of the shapes that I chose. But also, uh, one of the one of the things that I used to shape these, it's kind of like you can get an accident. Like you, the shape may be not what you expected, but it still is fun it and organic. Works. So, yeah. Okay, so, so let's start with how you are doing this. Get, get me in on the process. Okay, what are so you doing? The, when I did my research, a lot of them are done out of paper mache. Okay. And I'm kind of all about time. I don't have a lot of time to wait for it to dry. I'm impatient. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I thought my husband, he ships a lot of spas and, and big commercial things, and he had all this high density foam. And I snuck out in the garage and I grabbed some. What are you doing with that? That's my high density foam. That's expensive. But you know, if you get it in your TV box, your, your appliance box, you can use that and make your make your shape. Okay, so, so that's what you use for the for That's the what form. I use for the base. Mm -hmm. Now, these tools, I'm gonna give you a thousand dollar trick today. Fantastic. Because this thousand dollar, this is what it cost me to go to art school in the summer. <laughs> and this is what I learned in my summer class. Um, if you don't know, I'm in art school. <laughs> and, and I took this 3, 3D modeling class. And one of the tools that, that I found, they didn't talk about it in my class, but I discovered it on Amazon, is this, is this heat. It's a heating element and it cuts foam 
very clean. You can use a serrated knife, but it's really, it, 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 foam is messy. I mean, there's no way around it, it's messy. But this will heat up and this wire, it's kind of like cutting cinnamon a rolls with a dental like floss. Like a cheese grater, it yeah. almost looks like yeah. a cheese slicer. Yes, so this kind of cuts it and it melts it like candy. Uh, what's that puffy stuff? Cotton candy. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Cotton candy. It kind, of, it kind of melts in your mouth, so to speak. Like when you start shaping it, when I said it, some of it's accidents, sometimes you'll shave off a little more. So you, you can see in the process there's like little, oh, I'm going to destroy this display, but um, yeah, you use that and then they have these other little tips that will melt it. So like on the inside you can see there's like a little, uh, I don't know, what would you call that? A little pool? Mm -hmm. that, yeah that I've, I've taken the, the iron and I've just kind of melted it down so that I can use, make it, make room for the gills on the bottom. And so would you encourage us to purchase one of these? Well, I mean, <laughs> you don't have to. Okay. I'm just saying this is a thousand dollar tip okay. that, that may cost and you And these are the $7. attachments that These are the go, attachments. Okay, got you. And yeah. so then these work as little like melting knives almost and then you can use that. Yes, okay. so I will cut the form, I'll cut the basic shape. That's the basic shape. And then I'll use this to, to kind of sculpt it. Just like a normal it's cheese just, grater. Yeah, and it, it makes a huge mess. You will have a pile of white balls on your floor and then you'll track them upstairs just like I've done. So yeah, that, this will shape it. And then I take fine sandpaper and I smooth it out and it will, it will make all those rough bumps gone. And okay. it will just be a smooth surface for you to put your With glue your on and, and then apply your velvet. And I have to say, I don't have any templates today because all the shapes are different, all the sizes are different. Well, and they all look so darling oh, no, because it, you can tell they're so custom. And so after you get that basic shape, is that you just use any type of glue and cover it with your velvet? So, well, I used Mod Podge. I think oh. Elmer's glue would be better because it would have more stick. Mod Podge is more for like Mod Podging stuff on, but, I, but any kind of glue. Hot glue, I did use hot glue, but it do, you have to be careful because it does melt the styrofoam. So I let it cool a little bit, then I stick it on. It's, there's kind of a little dance you do between the glues because you don't want to ruin your foam with the hot glue, but you also need it to adhere. One, one tip I did use when I was shaping the velvet around the form, I would sometimes use little pins to just keep, a straight pin. Just a straight mm -hmm. pin to keep the fabric in place while it's drying so that it kind of stays on there. And that's how you um, it made it stick on the bottom. And then what did you use for the stems? So the stems, some of the stems are made out of foam. You can see right here. I would shape some of the stems out of the foam. And some of them are just a, a, a wire that's been covered with like a jute twine. And then I wrapped it with floral tape. And I will have all of this on my blog, but that one was an easy one because it's just stiff, stays up, it's wire, you can shape it how you want. Like in the terrarium, you can see that some of the mushrooms are curving and I like that aspect of the wire. I love it and I love kind of the fatter stems, the thinner yep. stems, all of the variety is something that I think just adds to the magic. Now, last time I saw you, Swiss Days snagged we up some of your flags, but so, where's the best place for us to catch up with what's next? So my first show for the season is gonna be at Hollyhocks and Honeybees up in Mountain Green and then um, I'll do Jenny Bee Market and that's moved up a couple weeks, which has me a little bit stressed. <laughs> and then Art Market has changed locations. It's actually going to be downtown so those are the three places you can come see me and I'll have it all on my Instagram Amy Ferry okay Amy she's always the best thank you so thank much thank you so much